So hello, good morning, and welcome to the second session of Five Minutes Cardio Time. I'm Peter Motor. Last time we talked about the importance of the right parse tunnel for chamber view in dogs. Today we're going to talk about how to get the best and best reproducible right parse tunnel for chamber view in dogs. I told you that the right parse tunnel for chamber view is especially important because it enables you to compare the dimensions of the cardiac chambers and wall thickness. Just as, as a repetition, we got the right ventricle here, the left ventricle there. This is the right atrium. The left atrium is here. There is the tricuspid valve. Here is the mitral valve. This is the right ventricular free wall. This is the interventricular septum. This is the left ventricular free wall. And this is the interatrial septum. So in order to be able to find it, you need to know how the heart is located inside the chest of a dog if the dog is positioned in your usual or standard echo position. So if we want to get a right parsonal four chamber view, it's important that the dog is lying on its right side with the legs towards you. So like this dog is positioned here on this image. And you can easily see uh, the position of the heart inside the chest here. So there is the apex and this is the base. Yeah? So oh, the heart is usually tilted a little bit cranial inside the chest. What is also important is to rec recognize or to remember that the right ventricle forms the cranial margin of the heart. The caudal margin and the apex of the heart are only formed by the left ventricle. So this is the right ventricle here. So if you want to find the right ventricle, you have to be very cranial or, or um, uh, far away from the apex to see it. If you want to guide the transducer in a proper way, you have to know that there are very micro maneuvers required in echocardiography. It's not like in abdominal sonography where the maneuvers can be quite, quite a lot. Yeah? In echocardiography, you want to have micro maneuvers. And in order to be able to do that, it can sometimes be helpful to stabilize the cable with your pinky. This enables you to make your movements very, very small and delicate. So what are the movements we are usually talking about? We are talking about the twist. A twist is the axis of the transducer stays the same. You're just twisting it clockwise or counterclockwise. So what is a tilt? A tilt means that you bring the cable into a different position. The head of the transducer is the same, but the cable is brought into a different position. And the slide means that uh, you're moving the transducer along the chest within uh, intercostal space or from one space to the other one without tilting or twisting the transducer. This is a slide. So again, always start with the right parasternal four chamber view. This is position one of the S-step protocol. This is the most important view and should look like this. Yeah, so the septum and the free wall should be approximately perpendicular to the um, perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. Yeah, it's like a brick here. Yeah, should not be tilted. You should be able to see enough of the right ventricle and right atrium, and you should see a very nice left ventricle and left atrium in your view. So how to get there? The easiest way is to couple your transducer to the chest wall in the following way. My index finger is on the reference, uh, the reference marker of the transducer. I aligned the plane of the transducer, this is the plane, with the suspected axis of the heart. So the plane is tilted a little bit to the head, okay? The cable is perpendicular to the chest, okay? I coupled the transducer in that way, cranial to the heart. So there is only lungs there. You won't see any heart, yeah? Then you slide your transducer from cranial to caudal until you see some right heart. 
And as soon as you see some right heart, you tilt the cable cranial towards the elbow. Then you're gonna have a very nice four chamber view. So this is the movement that we're gonna do. We couple our transducer to the chest wall with the index finger on the reference mark and the plane of the transducer aligned with the suspected axis of the heart. The cable points vertically to the table. So then we slide caudally until we see some heart and then we tilt the cable cranially to the elbow of the animal. So this is what happens on the right side. First of all, we start to decouple our transducer to the chest wall. There's only air, you can't see any heart there. All at once, you see some heart and you see some part of the right ventricle here. And as you see it, you tilt the cable cranial and what happens, you get a very nice four chamber view at the end. So once again, in a quicker way, this is what you're gonna have. This is an easy way to find that right parasternal four chamber view and, and works in almost all breeds. There's one exception, it's some chihuahuas. In some chihuahuas, it can be difficult. It's also different in cats, but it, I would say 99% of the dogs that you are dealing with, this way of finding the right parasternal four chamber view will work. So again, imagine the cardiac axis and adjust the virtual imaging plane of your transducer according to that axis. The reference marks po points in the cranial dorsal direction. This is where my index finger was. Then couple your transducers to the chest wall, cranial to the heart, right behind the foreleg. Slide caudally until you see some heart and then tilt the cable cranially. So sometimes you need some correction maneuvers. If you, if you uh, compare these two images or clips, then you can easily see that the heart on the right side is tilted. Why is it tilted? Because obviously the apex of the heart is closer to the transducer than the atrium. So if you look at that image here, you can easily see, you get that view when your transducer is too warts, it's too much uh, at the apex and the atria are too far away. So what would be the correction maneuver? If you have an image like this, then you have to move your transducer simply underneath the dog, so it's not far enough sternally, yeah? Just slide with your transducer underneath the dog towards the spine, then you'll get a straight view. This is what's happening on the right side. So first of all, we got the tilted view. Once you slide underneath the dog, it will straighten up and you will get a nice break here, okay? Sometimes this tip view can be of additional value if you want to see some details of the mitral valve, for instance, or if you want to align a Doppler beam with a jet or something, but it should never replace the standard view. You should always be able to get a nice, uh, a nice four chamber view in an appropriate way. So what about these two images? When you compare them, you can see that on the left side, there is not a lot of the right ventricle seen as, as opposed to the right clip. So on the left side, the, the right ventricle appears much smaller compared to the right clip. How can you correct that? So if you see almost no right ventricle, what you have to do, and remember, the right ventricle is located cranially to the left one, slide cranial, tilt the cable cranial, and then you get a nice right ventricle, okay? Slide cranial, tilt the cable cranial, then you see the cranial part of the heart. So this is what's gonna happen. Uh, uh, once you do that, you get a nice view of the right ventricle. So what about this? If you compare these two clips, then you can easily see on the right side that the ventricle and the atria look somehow shortened, roundish. It's not a nice brick like on the left side. Yeah? How can you correct for this? This happens if your transducer is twisted too much, either clockwise or counterclockwise. So if you get an image like this, 
please just twist the, the transducer a little bit into one or the other direction. And you will see how the ventricle straightens up. And at the end, you get a nice break. Okay. A little bit, uh, uh, a little bit faster now. Yeah. It's just a, a twist. So when you practice right, right ventricular, uh, right parasternal four chamber view, try all these movements and see what happens and try to find back to where you want to be find your break and if you do it multiple times you will get better and better and better if especially if you do it in different breeds so next time we're going to talk about m modes because m modes enable you to do the measurements of the left ventricle and the septum and the free wall MOs provide you with a very high temporal resolution. This is why they're usually used for your uh, uh, measurements of the left ventricle. So this will be the topic of, for next time. So good luck with your practicing and best regards from Austria. Bye-bye.